Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. Staying organized can help you to increase your workflow and just overall be more productive. Today I'm going to show you how to organize your components in Figma and once you're done with this video you'll probably be able to save tons of time. So without further ado, let's climb straight in. So staying organized is important. What we want to do here is we want to start creating components. Now the reason we want to do this is so that when we need to reuse these components we don't have to make them from scratch again. So let's start making a component. Let's have a look here. Um, we're going to say button for example. Okay now if you right click on this component you can add an auto layout. Now changing the properties of your auto layout is quite simple. What we can do here is we can click on this and you'll see on the right hand side an auto layout will come up. So you'll see over here that we can change a few properties. So let us first change what it looks like. So let's click on fill. This will add a fill and let's make it green. Okay. And we are going to now give it a stroke, which is an outline. And then you can start changing the properties over here in terms of what it actually looks like. So the padding you can change like that. You can also change the padding from top to bottom. And over here we'll change the gap between items within this auto layout. So let's go to assets and let's search icons. And you can choose an icon to add in here. So let's for example, let's use this one. Now we're going to click down and drag. And we are going to just add it in here. Okay, of course, we can change what this looks like. So let us change it like that. All right, let's change the size of our text over here so that this is just a little bit bigger. And you're starting to see this is what it's going to look like. Now, you can also change if you click on that auto layout again the roundness of the corners. So let's just give it some roundness. And now, once this is selected, you'll see it says frame one. Okay. Now let's say this whole process that we just made now, we don't want to have to do again in the future. So let's go up to the top over here and you'll see it says create component. Let's click on this. Now we have a component and the button at the top changes to the add variant icon. So this means that this is a component. Now, if you want to reuse this component, you can go to the left hand side and you can go to assets. Let's just remove that. And over here where it says all libraries will go to local components and you'll see all of your components here. Now what I've done is I've cleared all of my components so that we can recreate them. So this is what this looks like. But there's a step further that we can take to organize how this actually works. So if you're clicking on the add variant, you can create another variant. Okay. So let's change the fill. Let's double click on this and we will be able to now change the properties of this individual button here. So we're in green here, let's make it red. So you can see now that this button is different. Now, if you click out here and you go into the local components again, you'll see this, once you hover your cursor over it, it has a little two over here and it says it includes two variants. OK, now the important thing to remember here is when you're creating these components, the way we keep them organized is by naming them. So everything in here would be buttons. And if you want to create another button, all you need to do is click onto this and on the bottom, you'll see a plus icon and you can add another component within this category. Let's double click on the name up there and let's name it buttons. So you can see now that we're starting to create different components. OK, you can go through this by creating different buttons. You can create different table cells, frames, whatever it is that you need to create. And all you're going to do is organize them into these categories. All right. These components over here. Now, some of the other things that you need to know about these components is when you're changing something here on this component, it will change all of the variation being done on your projects. So what you want to do is when you're building a project, you don't want to change the properties on your component when you're going and you're building a project. OK, let's say we're starting a new project here. We're going to click down and we're going to drag this onto our canvas. And here you can see 
this is the button that I'm using. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the components here. Okay, so let's see. I want to let's say I want to say accept. It doesn't change anything up here. But if I were to change the properties up here, it would actually change how this button will look when I use it. So let's say, for example, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say accept. As you can see at the bottom now, this is my project. It's now changed these properties and everything else that you do within here will now change on your project. So make sure that you keep that in mind when making changes to that master template or that master component. And on the left hand side here, you will see all of your components listed. So you'll see your buttons, you'll see your text boxes, maybe you'll see whatever else you want to organize it in, you'll see it all over here on the left hand side. And that's a good way of keeping everything in line and keeping your work streamlined.